sarcastic RSI. Um, if we are in an uh, overall higher time frame sell zone, this lets me know in confirmation with some other key things that overall I'm looking for a sale. Now I may take a buy on this opportunity and it's not I may. Once I get my confirmation, I'm buying on this. If we if we find support at this level, I'm gonna show y'all exactly what I'm thinking. If we find support at this level, this four hour level, I'm just pulling up my target. If we find support at this four hour level, because I know once price breaks a key level of resistance or support, and if we look to the left, we see that this was once resistance, we see that it was once support. Once we break a level, price breaks through, and then it comes back to retest that level before continuing to the downside. I would love to see this. If price forms a level of support off of this zone, what I'm gonna do, once I get my confirmation, is I'm buying at least to the 38.2. Price could push above, hit the 50 or even the 61A before we see some type of reversal to the downside. Good morning, good morning. I hope you guys are doing well. It's almost afternoon. Um, I wanna take a look at GBP JPY, okay? So I am gonna do a multiple time frame analysis for those of you guys who are not familiar. Multiple time frame analysis is where I start off on the higher time frame and begin to work my way down and finding key levels of support and resistance. And if you are not familiar with what that is, I definitely encourage you to visit um, the no cost mini course. There you'll learn not only that, but some other things that may help you out in um, your analysis. So you can find the link in the video description for that. But I'm going through, I'm marking out my swing highs, swing lows. And that is what I'm going to do on every time frame. And remember, I told you guys I color code the time frames because sometimes I'm on the go and I need to pull up on my phone quickly and find out where price is. And so I am on the monthly. That is the highest time frame that I go to. And then I'll work my way down. So I believe I found all of the levels except one. I see one uh, that I did not get. And if I want to double check it using this platform that I'm using, I can just pull up smart support. And I like to do them by hand first and then take um, the system to double check. And you'll see that S1, the package that I have goes up to S10. The package you may get may not, but um, I go all the way up to S10. And you'll see that what I've chosen is what has come up. So I'm going to get rid of this. Um, and then I'm going to go down to the lower time frame, which is the weekly. And I'm going to do the same thing over again that I just did. I'm going in. I'm finding my key levels of support and resistance. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my favorite tool of all in trading, the Fibonacci tool, to be able to find um, out what's going on, what is happening, and how can I take advantage of whatever move that might be coming into play. And so my weekly level is going to be blue. And I think this is good enough for what I'm doing because look where price is right now, 191. And I'm all the way down at 128. I honestly don't even need all of that, but I like to do it for practice. So now I'm going to go down to the daily and guess what I'm going to do? The same thing again. <laughs> so I'm going to change my color to red. And I am just marking off key levels of support resistance. And these areas are important because they are areas that price has the potential to change directions and reverse, right? So I want to double check, make sure I got my resistance levels. I'm good. I want to look at support. I think I did support already. Nope, I missed one. Now I'm good, I believe. So I'm going to turn this off. And then I am going to go to the four hour and do the same thing over again. So let me zoom. 
Uh, we got a level right here. I'm going to turn that gray. And you get so familiar with the colors, like in recognizing what time frame is on right now. It may seem like it's a lot and overwhelming to you, but I promise you, as you continue to move through this space, uh, it will become more and more familiar to you. All right. So I got my four hour level. And. This is no longer the low, so I can't count. I mean, I can. So what I'm looking at, let me show you. I, I guess I can say my dilemma. This was a past low, right? Because you had two candles to the left that were higher, two candles to the right that, the high, that were higher. So this was a past low. A new low has not yet formed, but this candle right here is lower. So my dilemma was in my mind, do I still mark this level? And I'm going to technically say yes, because we do not have a low that is formed yet. So to me, this is still in play, okay? And so I'm gonna mark off my other levels that I see, and then we're gonna get into the fun part. Uh, I am gonna go down to a lower time frame. Normally I stop at the four, but um, as I was marking this up and prep for my week, I start. I saw something. All right, so my one hour level is purple. And so I am going to mark my one hour levels. And I think, I think I'm good now. I, I really, I'm not, I have a couple more. <laughs> or I got one more. Okay, I'm done. So now that we've done that, you're like, okay, I got my levels. When I zoom out, this chart looks crazy. What do I need to do now, Casey? What is happening now? So I'm going to go back to the monthly. On the monthly, um, what I want to look at and see is where we are in the FIB sequence. If you guys don't know about FIB, FIB is the truth. I encourage you to learn more about it. Um, definitely go check out that no-cost mini course if you have not been using it so you can figure out how you can use it. So in this platform that I'm using, what I'm doing is going to the lowest time frame and looking for um, to see where we are in the sequence. So you'll see that you have colors in between your A and your B, right? And then you have colors outside of A and B. So what I'm looking for is to see the pullback that we got, which was a 23.6, a red level. We hit the D extension. Um, and so the thought is that price is now going to come back and correct, restart the sequence over, or it's going to uh, reverse on a larger, larger scale. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to go down to the weekly. And because we hit that D extension to the upside, I'm no longer interested in looking at what's happening to the upside on the higher time frame. I know we already hit the D extension. So now it started to look for what's happening to the downside. So I'm gonna grab my smart fib. I'm gonna click below the last low. And what I see here is an active fib to the downside. I see an A low or an A high, a B low. I see almost a 61.8 pullback. Uh, it looks like it hit 50 and it's just before the 61.8. So theoretically, this is in play to go until 162, 162.76. Um, on the higher time frame, we're in the weekly. So it could take several weeks for this to play out. You can't do much with that information. So you have to continue to drill down. So this is good information for me to know. Um, let's go ahead. If I can get this off. Uh-oh, bear with me, y'all. All right, let's go down to the daily. What we're searching for is to see how we can get into this play. So what I want to look at on the daily is this is still an active fib to the downside. Take profit is probably going to be a little bit closer. Yeah. At 165 because we're in a lower time frame. And on this one, you've hit the 61.8. And so theoretically, once we get past this weekly, daily, monthly, and weekly level, the D extension would be at the 165. But you've still got those strong levels you got to get through first. So I'm going to go down to the four and let's take a look. Let us take a look. Um, I am looking from the 
daily extension to see where we are. Price is at the 618. Did this hit? This didn't hit. 196.075. The high point, I'm just going to click on the bar of the candle. 195.95. So this sequence is still very much in play, right? <laughs> oh, this is 196.075. This sequence is very much still in play. And let me tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the A low, the B high. You had a very, very, very shallow, puny pullback. Price, the momentum was so strong. Price almost hit the D extension at 196.075. It fell a little bit short um, at 195.95, which was what, 10 pips, 10, 12 pips short. And then we see price push down to that 618 level. And then potentially what we theoretically and typically see is we typically see price come back to this 618 level, which on the lower time frame, why don't I have this merge on the four hour? I got to see what, oh, back here. Yep, that was my dilemma, remember? <laughs> that was my dilemma. Typically what we see is that price comes back to the 618, fin finishes out the sequence, and then, you know, is done. So there are a couple different things that I saw in this pair. So you could potentially play it to the upside, but my thought is that long-term GVP JPY is moving to the downside. That's my thought long-term. But to play this safe, let me grab this. To play this safe, and if you don't want to take it for the long buy, I'm going to delete this. I'm also going to delete this. We're going to go down to the lower time frame. So we see a buy opportunity, potential buy opportunity on the four hours for roughly 600 pips to complete the Fibonacci sequence to the upside. But the momentum is so strong to the downside. I'm leaning towards how do I get in for the sale, not for a buy. So I'm going to go down to the one hour. And remember, I'm still curious about what's happening to the downside. So I'm going to click below my last or click above my last high. You see, we got the same play in reverse. We got an A high, a B low, very, very puny pullback, less than 23.6. And price is sitting at the 118.127 extension. Same thing that we saw on the higher time frame. Typically, when this happens, price will stall out at this level. So we have to wait for it to form some kind of low. And then we see price want to take a deeper retracement before continuation to finish out the pip sequence. And remember, I've got to see where we are on the stochastic RSI. Um, if we are in a overall higher time frame sell zone, this lets me know in confirmation with some other key things that overall I'm looking for a sale. Now I may take a buy on this opportunity and it's not I may. Once I get my confirmation, I'm buying on this. If we If we find support, at this level, I'm going to show y'all exactly what I'm thinking. If we find support at this level, this four-hour level, I'm just pulling up my target. If we find support at this four-hour level, because I know once price breaks a key level of resistance or support, and if we look to the left, we see that this was once resistance. We see that it was once support. Once we break a level, price breaks through, and then it comes back to retest that level before continuing to the downside. So I want a swing low to form. Again, if you don't know what a swing low is, I advise you to take a look at the no-cost mini course. I would love to see this. If price forms a level of support off of this zone, what I'm going to do once I get my confirmation is I'm buying at least to the 38.2. Price could push above, hit the 50 or even the 61A before we see some type of reversal to the downside. But in my mind, this is what I want to see. So I would take this for the buy once I get my confirmation. And then I'm watching at the level of 192.8 for continuation on the sale. So on the reversal, if we get it, what I'm looking for is... If we get the level of support to form, this low to form, and again, somebody go look and watch that video and tell me what I need in order for a low to form. Once I get that, I'm executing on the buy. I'm carrying it for 270 some pips 
And then I'm going to be looking for sale entries to finish out my D extension for another almost 500 pips. So altogether, this opportunity has the potential to give you nearly 800 pips on the move. That's what I'm looking for. So drilling down even further, how do I set this up? This is great, Casey. How do I enter this trade? How do I take advantage of this opportunity? I see it on the large scale, but please show me how do I get into this? All right, let's drill down. I'm gonna get rid of this fib because we know where we are already, right? We know where we at. So I'm gonna go down to the 30 minute. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna shrink this just a little bit. I'm gonna grab my ray. I use the ray as opposed to the trend line because I don't want to um, mess up <laughs> my lines, draw through candles. And if you don't know how to draw trend lines, that mini course again is something that might be useful for you. I just wanna double check what I've drawn. I'm gonna click above the last high. We see that I'm a little bit aggressive. So I'm gonna pull this in just a bit. I'll pull this out, excuse me, just a bit. And then I should be good. Let's double check it. I pulled it out too much, Lord. Okay. So we should be good now. Perfect. All right, so what I wanna see, before I execute on anything, what I wanna see is I wanna see a bullish break. So I wanna see a low for. I want to see a bullish break across this trend line. And honestly, I would love to see it on the higher time frame. Uh, this is only the 30 minute chart. But if I do get it on this lower time frame, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna take it. I wanna see price come back and retest once it breaks through. And then that is my entry point to ride this, this move. So I'm kind of excited about this. GJ was moving last week. Do you hear me? Uh, but this, uh oh, this would be the zone that I'm looking for. And I'm only carrying it to the 38.2. Does that mean the 38.2 is where it's going to sell? Absolutely not. Price could push up even further before turning around for a potential sale. So I'm going to watch. I'm probably going to set an alarm so that when price does reach this level, I'm made aware and I can start watching on the lower time frame to see if I start to get my signal to enter into this sale. But if you look at structure, this looks like the zone in the area that price could potentially come back to. So I'm excited. On the short term, you have a 200, almost 275 pip move to the upside if we get this level of support to form. And then on the long term, there is almost a 500 pip sale that you were able to take advantage of. So if this video was helpful to you, please go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Tell me in the comments what stuck out the most to you. Tell me in the comments what stuck out the most to you. If you learned anything new, share that with me too in the comments as well. All right. I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you have a very profitable